There was the best question in the comments the other day, and I'm going to address the answer here. Hi, I'm Michelle Patterson with Angel Souls, and let's talk about how do you do your spiritual awakening without inviting in dark entities or being fooled by beings that are not our angels or spirit guides? Beautiful question. So first and foremost, you are going to have, as you go through your process, some thought form, some bit of your ego release that's going to come up and you may perceive it as another entity when it really is a part of you. All right. That's something that I don't hear too many people talk about. So you may be trying to, on a very deep level with that you're not even aware of, trying to push out maybe a pattern, a memory, a version of yourself that you don't like, right? You're trying to push it away. And in so doing, it kind of gets stuck sometimes and we might see that as oh that's a dark entity it's you know it's a scary being coming in but it's your own shadow that's basically there so that might be something that's going on in the way of knowing what that is um you know I mean just facing your and, and healing from your patterns the things that you're afraid of those memories and starting instead of trying to push them away that should take care of that Okay, for the most part, for most people. The other thing to be aware of is the spiritual high. We've all gone through this one, okay, where we're just so excited. Here's something, a practice that helps me feel really peaceful within my heart, you know, (laughs) all of this stuff. And then we can very easily get ungrounded and start going into that place of spirituality is the answer for everything. Maybe before you've even hit any real spiritual growth, which is not always fun, You're out there shouting from the rooftops. This is the way to live, okay? This is how you manifest. This is how you make things happen for yourself. And (laughs) it would be in that place where you could be a little open and naive, yes, and be attracting in entities that are, you know, astral realm entities that are just like, oh, look, someone's open. What's this thing? Let's go investigate. And you go on in attachments it gets into a long discussion but as far as the energy part of it not attracting in the dark energy it's important in your practice to make sure you are stating your intention okay and when you're in that spiritual high place make sure you are doing grounding exercises you can meditate with archangel sandalfin archangel ariel michael archangel michael can help you be protected to protect your energy before we even go into a meditation, okay? Because that's, that is where you are going to have your guard down. If you do that, you'll have a much more pleasant experience. And if anything does try to come near you, you know, you, you, have, you have a little bubble of protection around you. So let's go into how to protect yourself. I already mentioned Archangel Michael. The way I ask the angels and archangels to come in, I, just me, I like to say Archangel Michael of God's purest love and light. All right. You could put it any old way you want, but the highest good, you know, pure universal love, you know, whatever it is that you want to say. But by putting that vibration out there, that already makes it difficult, if not impossible, uh, to a dark entity to be able to come close to you. Okay. And it guarantees that the entity that you're intending to work with is the one showing up, right? And you do this with your guardian angels, guardian angels of God's pure love and light, spirit guides of God's pure love and light. Again, however you want to phrase that. The biggest thing is to not allow yourself to slip into delusional thinking. I think a lot of people use spirituality as an escape. And so they come in and they just want to trade one mainstream belief system for a spiritual belief system. And just like we do when we are brainwashed and groomed and conditioned in mainstream, you can carry that right on over into your spiritual practice. This is where we get the false gurus. This is where we get the pop-up psychics, the pop-up tarot readers, the pop-up astrologers, you know, all that stuff. Now the big thing, I'm an angel medium. The big thing is Someone shuffling a tarot deck and saying, I'm going to get messages from your angels. Now I do, where is it? Oh, it's right here. I do use a little, once in a while, a hybrid 
tarot angel thing, but it, it's mostly angel based. So that's why I use it. I, people are going to hate me for saying this and I don't care. Okay. If you are using a traditional tarot deck, you are not getting angel messages. Please be careful of people who are claiming that. No, the, the energy of a regular tarot deck is fourth dimensional energy and it's meant to address more surface level things for the third dimensional ego consciousness reality. It is not to get angel messages. And people say, oh, well, there's, there's some images of angels in there. I don't know who they're talking to, <laughs> but like, it's not, I'm sitting there, I'm an angel medium, I can tell if they have angels around them, and the doubt, it's, it's empty around them, so just be careful, is all I'm saying, okay? And also educate yourself on what the various practices are, what, what are the vibrations around certain divination tools? We all get thrown into the same category but we all aren't doing the same thing and especially we're not doing it from the same intention, okay? So people, you know, you can have psychics who are big into just telling you what you wanna hear, uh, energy manipulation, if you're not the highest good of everyone involved, you know, you got all those kind of people out there. And then you have people who are trying to make like predictive readings or the readings that you want truly and like you don't really get any spiritual growth out of them um as a matter of fact it could make you just paranoid <laughs> or scare you or really it's giving you one trajectory based on where your energy is right now if we were to stop where you were right now wh where would you be heading right that's what a lot of them are picking up on it's just one potential and you're not locked into it all right so by educating yourself about you know, what frequency are the angels at? What frequency are spirit guides? And just to answer that, typically speaking, spirit guides are upper fourth dimensional beings. Guardian angels tend to be fifth dimension. That's where your higher self is. And, you know, then you go sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, you know, you start getting into archangels, the whole hierarchy around that, starseed energy, you know, all of that. So when you understand that and then... You're practicing that. Maybe you're practicing getting into fifth dimension, okay? Maybe you are practicing through meditation. If you do want to reach out to loved ones on the other side, uh, that is something to be very, very careful about because your loved ones typically when they cross over are going into fourth dimension, okay? So they, it does, fourth dimension is not perfect. It's kind of like here, but like floaty, <laughs> Without the density body, right? So that's why I always say, you know, when your loved ones cross over to the other side, like maybe you're on your way to practicing fifth dimension and you kind of go into the fourth dimension, you want to um, see your loved ones again. You can absolutely do that. Just make sure you are very protected as you do that and make sure that it's okay with the other soul as well, right? They're not there to just like, hey, I'm here, come visit me, <laughs> right? They may not come to you. And that's something that gets very confusing for people when they do want to contact their loved ones on the other side and they don't come forward. They're like, oh, are they stuck? No, they're probably just busy, okay? Like th their existence didn't end. This gets into another topic about you know, our loved ones. We are the carrier of their energy through memories. And so anytime you do want them to be with you, that memory itself carries a bit of them so you think of them think of a memory and they're there all right so again I'm trying to do a very condensed version <laughs> to answer this question but to come on back to that um you know how do you make sure you don't attract in the wrong kind of information or the wrong kind of guide or you know whatever the protection first educate yourself on what kind of different practices are going on out there it doesn't make them bad it just means know what you're doing you okay fine I'm, a, I'm an angel medium so I would say don't go to a tarot reader for it. <laughs> sorry but um but I practice in that realm and in that frequency someone who's doing a traditional tarot reading is not talking to angels no, they're not. They're not even in the frequency to do that. So just be aware of that, okay? Or if you go to somebody who is trying to do this like quick churning out of readings. Listen, I've had a flood of readings come in before. I wanted to make sure I got them to people. But when I started feeling like the energy needed to close off for whatever reason, 
I let it happen. And I said, hey guys, sorry. It's probably gonna be tomorrow or the next day <laughs> or the next day before these readings get to you. But when people are just like, oh, I can just, I can just answer all your questions just right now, just be careful. Some people are good and they can rapid fire a message. Awesome. Uh, research. That's the best I can say, research. And know what is behind certain practices. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. If you guys need a part two, ask some further questions, I can make another video. So let me know. I am sending you all so much love and take care.